We have an update from 120 North Main Street on that project. So who, who, uh, who is the lucky individual who's gonna update us on that tonight? Hi, everyone. Um, so, um, hi, I'm Alyssa LaRose. So hey, I'm Alyssa. the Housing Development Director at Rural Development Inc. in the uh, Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Um, so I'm gonna um, kind of lead the presentation tonight, but I'm joined by um, Gina Govoni, who's our Executive Director, and Pam Parmikian, who's our Director of Property Management, um, who are going to help with answering any questions that folks um, might have. And Jeff, do you um, do you have the the slides, or do you want me to share my screen? What makes sense? Either way, I have them. Uh, the ones you sent, I can share, or you can. Um, I have them up, so I guess I'll go ahead and and do do that. Um, so <clears throat> let me view this in full screen. Yeah, oh, we can see it now too. So. So everyone can see that? Yep. Yeah. Great. So we, so RDI wanted to um, kind of give an update to the Sunderland Select Board and the Sunderland community on the progress of Sanderson Place Senior Housing. Um, I know that most of you um, are very familiar with this project. Um, this project would not be happening without the um, persistence and work of um, the 120 North Main Street Committee, as well as a number of other town staff and officials. Um, so this really was a community initiated project. Um, and we, you know, are greatly appreciative of all the work that the town has, has done to make this happen. Um, so this project is being developed by Rural Development Inc. in partnership with Valley Community Development Corporation. And so our, our um, all-star project manager, Laura Baker at Valley CDC has been really awesome to work with and is, is really, um, has been championing this um, whole, whole uh, project through this process and, um, and it's, it's going well. <laughs> so I'm going to give an update on some of the construction and then we also wanted to update you all on kind of the next steps which will be marketing of uh, Sanderson Place to potential residents and applications and selecting residents and then moving in the fall. So we wanted to just provide an overview of that and see if there were any questions um, from folks in Sunderland. So this is just an overview of some of the great features of the development. Um, so the total unit count is 33. There's 30 units in the new building out back and three units in the village house. Um, and these are for senior housing. So the bathrooms are accessible. Um, some of the units are fully accessible. It's all visible um, by folks with, uh, in wheelchairs. Um, if you've seen the site uh, just in the last week or so, you'll see that um, PV squared is on site. They're starting to install the solar PV. So we've got solar that will be at the site. Um, the heating and AC is all electric. Um, so there's a lot of really great kind of green building and energy efficiency measures um, that are going into the building. Um, and then in terms of kind of resident amenities, there's a beautiful community room that has views to the fields out back behind the building. And I think I have some pictures showing that. Um, we have an outdoor deck um, that will be back there as well that's in under construction. Um, there'll be a fitness room, on-site laundry, as well as um, weekly meals and programming by LifePath. So LifePath is partnering uh, with us on uh, for ongoing um, resident support and programming. Um, so we're really excited about that partnership as well. Um, and just this, again, is just an overview. I know a lot of folks um, uh, are probably already familiar with some of this information, but most of the units are one bedroom. They're a decent size. They have a nice open kind of living um, kitchen and living concept um, and some good sized closets. <laughs> um, and then we do have uh, a few two bedroom units that offer that additional space. So some construction updates. 
Um, so this is a, a picture of the village house, which is the original house on the site that was restored. Um, and then there was a new addition added to the back. So there's three units in the village house, all on the first floor. Um, so overall construction um, is about 60% complete. Um, they're doing insulation, drywall, mechanicals are all under well underway. <laughs> it's all kind of happening. They're working kind of from the top down in the, in the main building. Um, as I mentioned, solar PV is being installed. Um, we are facing challenges in terms of um, escalating costs and some delays in material availability. Um, and the team on site has been working really, really diligently to kind of address um, all the different, all the different challenges that have come up. Um, and we are still on track for completion in late August. We are still within our budget. <laughs> And so we're, we're plugging along um, and we are hoping for a tentative ribbon cutting and open house on September 15th. Um, so we will definitely be coordinating with the town on um, kind of a, a big event to celebrate um, the completion of this project. Um, and it will be a really beautiful time of year. And then I was just going to share some photos. So the photos on the top are from earlier in the construction process, but they just show some of the really beautiful views um, from the main building, the building in the back. Um, and the one on the upper right is the community room. Um, so it has really nice big windows um, out to the fields. Um, and then the bottom picture is uh, recent. It's from last week or two weeks ago from the backside of the, of the building. And it, you can see, you can kind of see the deck um, that's under construction back there. Um, and that's where there'll be some outdoor seating uh, space. And then this, um, I took these pictures last Thursday. These are the interior of one of the units in the village house. So the village house is furthest along in terms of kind of the finishes um, and we're, we're Marios, the general contractor, is going to kind of fully complete one of the units as a, as a mock-up unit. So that's the, um, this is that unit. Um, and it's just really exciting <laughs> to see the flooring going in and we're going to have appliances and things like that soon. So it's, it's pretty exciting. So um, the next step is to start really getting the word out there that that these apartments are going to be available and um, we want people to apply. <laughs> and so our schedule for marketing is um, we will beginning, well, we, we will begin um, kind of advertising by April 22nd. Um, there's a little bit of kind of, uh, there's a chance that, that our schedule may shift slightly. We are waiting on HUD um, to publish the fiscal year 2022 income limits, which will be what, what we're using to base um, income eligibility for this, this project. And normally they, they um, publish them April 1st, and they haven't published them yet. <laughs> so we are anxiously awaiting um, that information because uh, we need we need it in order to let folks know you know what are the income limits the rents are based off of that as well so some of the information that we'll show in here are um, kind of um, preliminary until we get that that information but it gives you an idea but um, ultimately we're hoping that we can stick to this schedule um, and so we have a lot of events planned, especially with the South County Senior Center, um, uh, to kind of get the word out and to help uh, answer questions about the application process. And then we have three information sessions planned. Um, the first one will be at the Sunderland Public Library um, on May 4th. And these are in person. And we will have staff there who can help, um, help people with their applications and answering questions. Um, so these are really great events for folks to attend if, if you're interested um, in applying for a unit. Um, and then right now we have applications due on June 22nd. Applications need to be complete 
Um, and, and if you don't meet the deadline, you're, you're not in. <laughs> so it, it is a strict um, you know, deadline. Um, and then um, the lottery is planned for July 13th. And this really kind of places applicants in the order that their applications will be processed for kind of to, to determine full eligibility. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you win a unit. So we will be then reaching out to folks to kind of complete the um, application process after that. And so we hope that folks will be able to start moving in um, beginning in September. Um, we will need to kind of phase the move in um, and through winter, but hopefully by by spring we'd be fully fully leased up. And so just a little bit of um, information on some of the kind of minimum eligibility requirements. So um, the head of household must be age 62 or over um, as of the lottery date, which right now is July 13th. Um, and also combined household income has to be at or below 60% of area median income, which is based on household size. These incomes that are on the slide here are the 2021 income limits. So this is what is going to change. And so this at least gives you some um, understanding of kind of ballpark where the income limits will fall, but they may, we are estimating that they'll probably go up a little bit, but we just, we don't know until HUD publishes them. And then, um, you know, as, as I mentioned, applications must be returned complete, um, but this is where, you know, we can help uh, with, with answering questions and, and um, especially at the information sessions. Okay, good. So one thing that um, I know Sunderland folks may be interested in is the local preference aspect of the, the um, development. Um, so there is a local preference. This applies to current Sunderland residents um, folks who are currently employed in Sunderland, and also um, any households that have children enrolled in Sunderland schools. Um, so I know this is senior housing, but it may be possible that you've got a grandparent um, taking care of a grandchild, um, and that's totally, totally fine. And they could get local preference if they're enrolled in the Sunderland schools. Um, and so what that means is they get placed, your application would get placed in two of the, the pools for the lottery. So you have a greater um, chance of, of getting a unit. Um, and then the, the maximum rent, again, these are all subject to HUD, um, the more recent HUD income limits. So this is, again, kind of a ballpark. Um, um, there's one bedrooms and two bedrooms, and then there's additional subsidy for 12 of the units that will allow for residents to pay 30% um, of their income for rent, um, and the rest of it would be um, subsidized. Um, and so there are varying kind of affordability levels. The 60% area median income is kind of the, the top, and there are other um, levels of affordability. So we would encourage folks to apply, um, you know, even if you're, you're lower income, um, we encourage folks to apply. Um, and I know that's a lot of detail, <laughs> so that's why Pam and Gina are here to help answer any questions. But um, pretty soon you'll see this big green sign out front of uh, Sanders in place. Um, <laughs> applications will be made available on our website as well as um, as hard copies at the town office, the Sunderland Public Library, Senior Center, and at our offices. Um, and we'll have more information on our website um, on how to apply. Okay, and hopefully we can put some links on our site too, which would be great to link to your stuff. Yeah. So, excellent. Yeah, uh, we would love we would love that. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. If there's any questions, excellent presentation as always, Alyssa. Thanks. Um, does anybody in the room here have any questions at all? Jeff, I have two questions. Um, the first one, Alyssa, the local preference doesn't apply to all 33 units, right? It, um, there's how many are eligible for local preference? Um, yeah, I got that. Um, so 
You're, you're correct. The, the maximum allowed local preference in any project is 70%. So out of the 19 self pay units, 16 of those will have local preference. Okay. Thank you. And then sure. the other question that I had was looking at the list of amenities. Um, I know the select board has asked several times or said that it would be really nice in some way to honor the previous owners by, you know, naming a gallery or a garden or a community, or just having a plaque, yeah. say, you know. And I just wanted to raise that again in case it fell through the cracks or there's still time to do something like that. I don't. I don't want to speak for the select board, but no. I know that it was discussed previously. Yeah, and yeah, like the community room or something. Is like yeah, that. yeah. So, thank you, Jeff. But that's something we can certainly we're we're right in the process now of looking at our work and signage, and it's something we are planning to weave in. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And it was good to see um, so many information sessions too. You know, with and without the senior center, because you know you want to be able to reach folks who aren't involved in the senior center and things like that too. So that's good to see. <clears throat> and we'll have website links and everything. So, <clears throat> does anybody on the phone have any questions? Do you have one more question, Jeff? You look no, like you're no. I, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking, do we want to do almost a mailing to everyone in town who's 62 and over? Well, that's something to think about, too. Us, not, not right. you. I'm just, <laughs> um, With some of the um, session information and things like that, because you, we got to try every communication channel we can. Yeah. Um, we can look at that. Just thinking of what we yeah. could, yeah, you have a lot of stuff planned and how we can help support that. Yeah. Just sort of where my head's going. Yeah, that would be great, Jeff. Um, yeah, I'll definitely coordinate with you and, and Cindy um, um, on what just the, the, the materials we already talked about um, in terms of like having the application. Available, but if there's other um, ways to get the word out, we have a flyer um, that, that could go out or if if there's something else that we can um, put together that you think would be useful, um, yeah, happy to, to talk about that. All right, great. That'll be good. And, you know, every communication method we can use probably would, and even, you know, yeah. you want to use everything you can use because even then, still people won't hear about it. So it's always good. Okay, great. Yeah, and it will be, I, I didn't put this on the slide and I meant to mention it, but there's a whole, Full um, list of advertising that we're required to do, and that yep. you know we're happy to do. Um, so it will be coming out in the newspaper. Um, it'll be published on several online um, um, kind of housing search um, web pages. Um, it's the, there's the flyer will go out to. Um, I think it's like we have a list of 500 <laughs> regional and local organizations and partners. Um, so we definitely will be doing um, a lot of outreach, but if you have um, ideas um, that we might not be, be thinking about, we're happy to, to do more. So um, okay. definitely um, just let us know. All right, great. Thanks. Uh, really appreciate the presentation. It's good to see it coming along. So Just w one more question, mm, yeah. very, very quick. Um, the eligibility and... Um, and the rental is not going to be, it's going to change from year to year, right? Um, just just because one of the things that I've heard in the community is, hey, my rent's gone up so much, I, you know, from seniors who are interested in this project, I can't necessarily afford my unit. And I just want to clarify for them, it's not rent control, it's affordability. And so you may see, you know, um, slight increases based on whatever HUD says. Is that right? Um, yes, that's actually exactly right. Um, yeah, all the numbers are always driven by HUD. Those are those income limits that traditionally come out April 1st. And we are, we, we don't know why they're delayed this year, but um, we are expecting them to be released at the time now. 
but but you're right both the rents and the income limits are driven by that thanks Pam. it's a good point sure. Just so people know. I just want to make one um, more note. I think Alyssa mentioned already that we're we're tentatively planning on a ribbon cutting ceremony on September fifteenth. Yeah. Um, that will be in the morning, and we would love for um, someone from the town to um, come and just um, speak briefly on behalf behalf of the town um, at that ceremony. Um, we're, we're still uh, finalizing the details, and of course, that is assuming that construction continues on schedule, which we've been very, very lucky with so far. Um, but that is, right now, that is our plan. Okay. I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to get Jeff a giant pair of scissors or something. <laughs> but That'd yeah, I, I suspect you'll be there at least, probably, right? And then... Yeah. And then maybe a select board members, depending on, because we work during the day, so depending on our schedules, but... Yeah, and we might get... Uh, 120 north main committee member or something right. like that yep so there'll definitely be somebody there no question about that wonderful so all right great all right well thanks a lot appreciate your time and thanks for the presentation have a good night thanks thank you thank you